What's up, everybody? It's Chicago Talk Show host, and I'm going to do a reaction video. We're going to watch this video together of, of an event, a speaking event of Professor Derek Jensen back in 2018 at the Eugene Public Library in Oregon. So apparently this, this sort of event um, created an outcry. And I see this, this article, as I did some research on it, that people people got butt hurt over over what appeared to be his transphobic views and that a certain a certain alphabet group found found what he spoke of to be offensive so i watched the video and there is there's none of that he doesn't say anything homophobic he doesn't say anything transphobic but what he does talk about is the truth the truth and you're gonna see how it it scorches moderns and their lies right they can self-impose their lies they can you know wear a badge of pride and be willfully blind to truth but truth is gonna it's gonna burn through it it's going to burn through it because there's no stopping the truth because truth is based on reality and you're going to see that and it, it makes moderns mad but what's what's the most disconcerting thing about the video is while he's at and never at any point homophobic or transphobic which are just neologisms that moderns use right make up this sort of these sort of spells these sort of the language doesn't mean anything right and they get really mad when he starts talking about connections with queer theory and pedophilia but without further ado let's watch the video together but the problem with Diogenes one of the problems with Diogenes was that the oracle at Delphi had told him that his job in life was to deface cultural currency and what that meant is that he was supposed to uh, violate social norms and so this manifested in him defecating in the theater. Remember I read the thing about how from the beginning anarchism has had this problem? Um, <laughs> that, so he would defecate in the theater because no one's going to tell me where I can and can't defecate. Um, he would uh, uh, masturbate in the, uh, in the public market, which the whole public sex thing that's pushed by anarchism <laughs> goes all the way back to that as well. Um, and he would violate all social norms. And so here's the problem is that, or one of the problems. Let's break that down. So anarchism, right? So maybe when you were young, I know when I was young, I think back in like eighth grade, it, there was like this, this, this thing that was floating around, this anarchist cookbook. And you can like make all sorts, sorts of things with it. And it's like, you make that anarchist A, right? The giant A in the circle, and you think that you're like this rebel, and it's so and it's so cool when you're young to to rebel, right? But wh what are you rebelling against, right? After I get seasoned with with maturity, you know, I, I you know I kind of look back with a little bit of embarrassment at that part, but but that was because I was naive, right? I didn't I didn't know fully what anarchism entails, right? And so when you have people who are who who promote that sort of thing you're condemned to promote everything that sort of thing promotes and suddenly at least for me it starts getting uncomfortable so it, this idea of anarchists and yeah you know do whatever you want but then we run into problems like i don't want to see you because you're an anarchist poop at the theater right I don't want to see you masturbating on the street because you're an anarchist and you, you know you want to you want to take it to society, right? Um, that just seems to me that you're a child and you have no self restraint. All right, back to the video. Is again the sort of black and white thinking where just because there are some social norms that are oppressive, therefore all social norms must be destroyed. And that leads anarchism to some atrocity-inducing madness. For example, um, there is a long correlation between anarchism and pedophilia and support for pedophilia. The, I want something relevant. Please. 
Oh. Oh, wait, wait. So, notice the butt hurt, right? Immediately, the modern, the modern women who are there immediately start screeching, right? Because now it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I grew up with this, this modernity of this prideful culture. And then there's this ugly side of it that's connected to it with, with pedophilia. And suddenly, it's so truthful that it's like, wait a minute, well, we, we can't talk about that. You know, wait, love is love. Like, this is, what are you talking about? We don't, don't want to hear that. And it's because there's a severe injunction for the modern. It's like, you, you want to be your own God and, and do whatever you want and be prideful about it. But at the same time, you're condemned to, if you're going to go along that sort of, those sort of chains, you're also connected to this, this nasty uh, disorder known as pedophilia and its association with it. And suddenly, you're, as a modern, it's like, are you going to start to put, to defend one thing and then not the other? I mean, how are you? How does that? How does that make any sense? And it doesn't make any sense unless you are actually going to defend pedophilia, in which case, um, I'll pray for you, <laughs> uh, because I think that sort of thing is evil. Into it. I have support for pedophilia. Let's talk about something relevant, please. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Much for asking. How about something relevant? I've been talking about rape culture all day, and. Pedophilia and the support of pedophilia is not rape culture? He's a rape victim. And I stand with him to anybody that's against him because I'm a rape victim by another rape man. Okay? So just because I'm big and just because he's big doesn't make us rapists. We're survivors. Okay? And I'm okay. okay. Thank you. And, okay. So actually. Crowd's getting into it. Crowd's getting riled up. You know, this hits people at their core, right? When we start talking about um, what are we talking about? Pedophilia, having sex with a child. I mean, how are you going to defend that? And so, um, you know, people are people are getting uh, the Jimmys are getting rustled. So we'll continue. Actually, it seems you're acting like this is a spurious connection. So we're going to play Jeopardy. This is, we're going to play queer theory, we're going to play queer theory, pedophilia, Jeopardy. Okay, answer. Uh, commonly called the godfather of queer theory. Who is Foucault? Who is Foucault? you is this supposed to be a role model for you Foucault this is your hero let me keep going argued? oh uh, another way to ask this is who argued no I guess the answer would be argued for the eradication of age of consent laws as in down to infants mm -hmm. who is Foucault <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let me know in the comments if you actually knew that about Foucault. Let me know in the comments if you actually found out about that for the first time. What do you think about that? We'll keep going. Okay. Next one. Um, uh, the author of the the author of the uh, founding document of queer theory. Who is Gail Rubin? Um, what percentage? No, no, the answer is 50%. Question is? The amount in that article that was a defense of pedophilia, specifically, quote, boy lovers, so men who talk boys. Oh. And since you're not believing me, quote, quote, this is in the founding document of queer theory. Like communists and homosexuals in the 1950s, boy lovers are so stigmatized that it is difficult to find defenders of their civil liberties, let alone for their erotic orientation. That's in the founding document of queer theory. 
Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm using facts. <laughs> so when people say love is love, are you saying that a grown man and a little boy or a little girl, that that is the equivalent to an adult relationship with a man and a woman? Think about that. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're defending. You may want to think twice. We'll keep going. A thousand apologies. One must never let facts in the way. Oh, and she also compared, by the way, she compared pedophilia. She compared pedophilia to uh, a preference for spicy food. Um, the thing is, I have never heard of anyone who has to have years of therapy because they ate hot and sour soup. Okay, so up to 200. So the idea of, I'm going to harp on that. So the idea of, say, your, your sexual preferences, right, however deviant they may be, when you start, when you start comparing a child's life to food, I think now we're getting to the, into the realm of the demonic. I mean, who, t who talks like that? Who talks? I digress. We'll keep going. Now it is, uh, now it is, now it is pedophilia and queer theory for 300. Uh, that would be author of uh, Macho Sluts. Well, author of Macho Sluts and Public Sex. Pat Califia. Wait, 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 what was it somebody said? Stay relevant. <laughs> Notice the, um, the women, again, um, they, here comes a label calling, right? Some, some woman said that he's a, he was, he's an eco-fascist. So as incoherent and, um, as that is, um, this is this is what happens, right? So the the modern, the entitled, the entitled modern, filled with pride, when assaulted with truth that breaks their delusions, they're gonna start they're gonna start calling you names, right? And they're gonna start using neologisms and try to because that's all that's all they can do, right? Because they're ignorant of the truth and facts. Um, there you go. We're going to keep going. How can you have to be wrong about everyone in a social justice platform if you're spooky? If you are denying, if you want to talk about trying to uplift women because of the rape culture, mm -hmm. if you're not going to uplift every single fucking woman, then no, you're exclusionary, you're not a fucking revolutionary, and it's bullshit. <laughs> okay, let's talk. So... Yet, an, yet again, another another goal, ghoul of a woman, right, starts talking about that she just gets on her own soapbox, total disrespect, tossing expletives, and that he's not a revolutionary, and condemning him for not being a revolutionary, in which I ask... What, what what revolution are we talking about? Right? The, because I think I have an idea of what it is. And it sounds to me like you're mad at him for not being a revolutionary like so many moderns are. A revolution against the moral law. Right? And um, that's, that's what's really going on here. That's the hidden grammar of what, what she means by that. It's like, hey, you're not one of us. You're not, you're not taking down society and the nuclear family of a, of a mother and a father raising their kids, right? And they adopt this other doctrine, right? This postmodern doctrine. And so this is why they say that people become indoctrinated, right? Because they can't think for themselves, so they... So they regurgitate a bunch of things that, that don't make sense and they say things, they do a lot of talking without saying anything, right? Because 
the language there's a there's a divine component to language and moderns can't they can't defend the abhorrent behavior of some of the some of these things and they'd rather stuff it in the closet because they can't defend it right deep down the inside they know that that the idea of pedophilia is is evil but they try to use language to to defend it and then they can't right or they make up language to defend it and it comes out it comes out backwards and it comes out incomprehensible and irrational and all you're doing is continuing to to defend a lie and what's worse of all is you're, you're lying to yourself and um that's brutal that that's brutal because that's a lot of that's a lot of weight you have to carry to yourself right this idea of lying to yourself over and over day in day out like yes i'm so prideful about this behavior that i'm doing that's unnatural but at the same time i value nature it's like no you don't which is it if if you if you value nature and what's natural then why are you going against nature right we we want to save the planet and all these things and we want to protect mother nature then why are you violating nature we'll keep going let's talk about uh pat cliffia Okay, here's something from one of... Here we go again. So, probably the same woman, um, the same ghoul, tossing out the spell because he's a transphobe. Again, the, the man has, has says, had said nothing transphobic. He's never said, I hate trans people. He's, quote, he's quoting sources and speaking the truth. And this is what... This is what the moderns are are actually mad about the truth and because it, it disrupts their re, their their delusions right and so um so they rage we'll keep going of uh pat Calipia's books you know it's really interesting it's really interesting that when i actually start talking about the relationship between queer theory and anarchism and pedophilia that uh, it becomes, they, they really want to shut me up now. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's Pat Calipia. Pat Calipia. Here we go. You're a homophobe. Again, the man has not said anything like, I hate gay people or anything like that, but these, these words that don't mean anything, they get, they get tossed at him, but it's like, they just melt away because he's shielded by truth, right? And that's all that these hyenas can can do, right? Is insult him or come cast these insults that that are are based on nothing, right? And um, and they admit it. They admit it. it's like you know when we're when we're talking about queer theory, we we, we let's not talk about its connections to pedophilia, you know, and it's. It's it's you it's a it's that idea of trying to have it that double standard trying to have it both ways, but shrieking at the truth that this dark it's not really dark people know about it but people don't want to talk about it, and then worst of all they don't want people to know about it, and um, it's it's futile because in the end it's it's gonna come it's all gonna come to light anyway, and. It's this sort of thing is deeply shameful to them, and I think I think this is this is at a core for so many of these people. There, there's a there's a profound sense of guilt and shame for for what they're doing, right? And so, what do you do if you, if you you're too you're not if you don't have the strength, you may have you may may have a false sense of pride, but if you don't have the strength to confront this shameful behavior that you're carrying around, this guilt. And then you're asking yourself, well, why am I not happy? Why is this not, why is this not fulfilling uh, to me, right? Um, it's because there's a reluctance or a willful blindness towards the truth that there's something unnatural about what you're promoting or defending or doing. And so that's scary to do for them. So they would rather um, attack the person who's speaking the truth rather than confront the truth 
And so, there you go. We'll keep going. Oh, wait, 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 just a second. Just a second. I was accused of homophobia because I am against pedophilia. Yes. Who is it who actually makes the connections between that? Okay, here's something by Pat Califia. Pat Califia has written, any child old enough to decide whether or not she or he wants to eat spinach, play with trucks, or wear shoes is old enough to decide whether or not she wants to run around naked in the sun, masturbate, sit in someone's lap, or engage in sexual activity, by which she does not mean play doctor, she means with adults. And she's very clear about that because she also says that uh, pedophiles should be more and not less uh, invested in children's lives. Okay, so we're at 300. 400 is... Uh, the most famous uh, queer theorist of today. Answer. No, it is. Let's think about that. So I don't have kids. I'm not, I'm not a father yet. I hope to be one day. You know, I was, I was, I was raised with values. Right? I was, I was raised with decency. And then, of course, they protected me. They protected me from anybody who they got a whiff that may be um, any kind of danger because that's what parents should do. You protect your children. That's how I was raised, right? You know, I, I used to go out in the summer in the summer, and when I, was, you know, when I was a kid and hang out in the street and everything, but come a certain time, I got to be home. I got to be home for dinner. I got to be home because I got, I got school the next day. It wasn't like I'm eight years old and I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the club, right? What? Like anyway, we'll keep going. Answer. Not Judith Butler. Is, who is Judith, Judith oh. Butler? <laughs> okay, Judith Butler is the most uh, famous queer theorist of the day. So I just got to say, he's handling this beautifully, right? He's got this crowd of ghouls and witches who are, who are, who are, you know, infuriated at the truth, and they're they start attacking him. You've got some some of the male voices that are more a little bit more reasonable there, maybe a little bit conflicted, right? And he he uses some humor because to kind of diffuse the situation because it, it, it's escalating, right? Um, and that's, that's brilliant. And he does a great job of that. His composure, he keeps it. And he keeps, he keeps pushing through. He doesn't, he doesn't back down. We'll keep going. Uh, and I have a serious question for everybody who's hating me uh, in a moment. Um, except I have to spell intergeneration correctly. Flash forward a little bit, so um, we're going to keep pushing through. Up, 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 up. Okay. Um, we see you, all of you supporting yeah. here, who Good. do not care about trans people lives. Okay, okay, okay. Here's a great quote from Judith Butler. Did you hear that? So, what appears to sound like a woman, another ghoul from the crowd, um, says that we see you as in the people who are supporting what this man is saying. So what are we talking about here? This is sort of a, a vengeful saying that, you know, we, we see that you're supporting this and you're, you're not with us. And there's, a, there's a, being, a, a nasty vindictiveness to it. And what's ironic is these people simultaneously wanted to be taking want to be taken seriously as adults. And it's, it's just not happening. We'll keep going. 
Craig, how did you follow? Okay, so, so Judith Butler wrote, so I keep adding this qualification. When incest is a, so I keep adding this qualification. When incest is a violation, suggesting I think there may be occasions in which it's not. Why would I talk that way? Well, I do think that there are probably four. Did you hear that? Did you hear that ghoul? We see you. With, she says it with such intensity. This burning desire for revenge for, 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 for just being mad at the people who support truth, right? They can't stand it. ...of incest that are not necessarily traumatic and which, or which gain their traumatic character by virtue of the consciousness of social stain that they produce. Yeah, that's true. But that's one of that's one of the queer heroes. Okay, now now we have we have uh... truth. This is one of your queer heroes, and this woke woman says bullshit. So again, there's a there's an utter rejection for truth and an utter drive for this prideful drive to to stay ignorant of it, to be willfully blind of it. It's like, no, it's like, no, stay away. This is, but it's futile. So the next best thing is to hurl insults at him that, that make, that are, that are based on irrationality. Uh, for 500, uh, we have um, the last one in the queer theory and pedophilia. Uh, the answer is queer theorist who has spoken out strongly against pedophilia. Zero. Zero. Who is no one? Who is no one? Not a single one. Because the entire thing is based on transgressing. So there you go. So that, that really burned the moderns, that piece of truth. Um, it's like, it's like, it's like a crucifix to a vampire, right? They, they can't even hear it. They can't even look at it. Because the truth is so bright that it it's like it shows just how much they are in darkness, and it's like it's almost like a like I remember being a kid and, and, and like waking up to an alarm because it's got to go to school. I got to go to school and it, like the sun's in my face and I'm like oh, I don't want to go to school sort of thing and and uh, but you you got to go. It's a terrible analogy, but um, kicking and screaming. The whole way, like child, like children, they, 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 they just can't handle it. They can't. And they have to keep this, this veil of darkness around them. And because that's, that's where nobody can see this, this, the deception, the self-imposed deception, right? You're covered in this darkness and you, 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 you make your own little, your own little world outside of reality it's it's a it's a flimsy sort of darkness and as soon as that light of truth hits you it's like it's like that morning sun it's so bright it's hard to look at so you got you got to put like some sunglasses on and say ah no no I, I i'm not gonna do that I'm, I'm just gonna keep myself in darkness and that way that way it doesn't hurt me right because i, I again i do believe that there's a there's a a lot of these people carry a lot of shame and guilt, and rather than confront it, they just rather keep themselves in the dark. We'll keep going. Yeah, I know, dear fucking God. So here we go again. So another. A uh, woke woman starts holler, hooting and hollering about Lord knows what. It's it's deeply irrational, um, but she uses the, the she tries to use the intensity of her voice to make her point compelling, but it's incomprehensible, and um, we can't take it seriously, you know. And so, and then and, and they resort to tossing in expletives to highlight a point, which is always a weak thing to do. 
the, the, the person who has to defend their whatever they're defending and they have to toss in expletives, you know, like, fucking believe me, um, you know, you're, you're doing yourself more harm than good and um, it's, it's telling. It's telling that you have to use swear words, you have to use curse words to highlight your whatever you're trying to say. It's cheap filler. We'll go on. Okay. Okay. The question is. The question is. Okay. The question is. Okay. So we have like two minutes left, and. Um, do you believe in all theory of pedophiles? Oh, of course not. What I'm saying is that queer theory promotes pedophilia. Okay, queer theory itself. <laughs> and I, I, gave, I gave citations from actual queer theorists. Or we could talk about Allen Ginsberg. How about that? Did you know that? Let me know in the comments if you knew that. Also, if you enjoy this video and you're vibing with me, Make sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel. So this is more or less one of the first reactionary videos that I'm making, and so um, let me know what you think. We'll keep going. He has some dreadful lines about how children would get used to our lovemaking if uh, if only the adults would stay out of it. Hakeem Bay. Hakeem Bay, for God's sake. Um, so my point is, my point is, this is this is not. Did you hear that? Replay that quote. Replay that quote and you tell me if love is love. And if you're still defending it, you're just lying to yourself. You're not lying to me. You're lying to yourself. We'll keep going. Queer theory, I think, is really hard. And thank you for asking respectfully. You were the one who asked, right? <laughs> um, yes, I think queer theory is, is a really harmful philosophy. And I want to be really clear that... Yeah, it has nothing to do with homosexuality. And it emerged in the 1980s really as a response to uh, a lot of, uh, especially lesbian feminist ideas. And it also emerged through postmodernism, which we can talk about or not if you want. But the point is that I think that it is, it is a mistake to, some of the strongest opponents of queer theory are lesbians. Mm -hmm. And there are also, a lot, not as many, but there are a large number of, of gay men who are very strongly opposed to queer theory. On that, um, would any 12:30. So it's pretty much cut off your time. No platform for hate. 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 What hate? He's speaking the truth, and the, this is what the modern woman is rejecting, the truth. And this is what she's saying that she hates. This is the hidden grammar. She hates the truth. No, I'm boring. Wait, wait. No, I want, I want to hear, I want to, excuse me, person on the right. So the woke woman um, she starts trying to build a chant, right? No platform for hate. Even though he said nothing hateful, he's just speaking the truth. But she she goes to this 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 sort of rhetoric of what she sees maybe on on Antifa protests or whatever, and this mindless sort of chant, right? This this sort of self imposed spell casting she wants to spread that sort of spell to everybody 
and immediately dies out um, despite her um, her willfulness. Um, but again, there's there's no real defense. It's it's this mindless slogan that she just repeats. She's like, oh, I've heard this. This is what people say at this sort of thing. So I'll just say it here. And at its core, it's this desperate attempt to to retaliate, which is again, it's based on nothing. You're just shouting out empty words because it doesn't apply here, and that, that's all you're doing. You're just you're just yelling at him at this point. All right, I fast forwarded it a little bit. Um, this dude asks this long question, and so um, I'll spare you that. And um, I'll put the original link in the description so you can watch the whole thing by yourself and see what you think. But uh, we're going to pick it up after this uh, person asks his question. And here's part of his response. There are decent people who are Christians. There are decent people. My problem with queer theory is its foundation in postmodernism and its... Uh, David Halperin is a, is a pretty big queer theorist. And one of the things he says is that uh, queer is, by definition, against all that is normal. And that's my response, too. It's like, I, I mean, so paying 7% sales tax is normal? So that means <laughs> if I pay 20% sales tax, that's queer? Is it, I mean, it's just, it's, no, that, so the, the point is that, the point is that my problem with queer theory is that it is based on a blanket attack on all that is cons considered normal. And I don't think that that is, like even if I lived in Nazi Germany, it would not The point, shut the fuck up. So this idea that queer theory um, and the, this, def, this definition that it's against all that is normal, so that should be a red flag, right? So again, what are, what are we talking about here? If, if you're rebelling, if you're revolting against normality, and what's natural? What are you? What exactly are you trying to accomplish? What What good do you think is going to come from that? Think about that. And this makes me think of like the stories and the real communities out there of people that used to be homosexual, and they since stopped that and became heterosexual and then married and found that their lives significantly improved. There's, sto there's tons of stories out there, but you don't, you don't hear about that, right? Because the mainstream, they don't want you to, they don't want you to know about that, those stories, those successful stories about how they turned away from that, right? They want, they want to keep you in that matrix, right? Because as E. Michael Jones pointed out, it's a form of, it's a, it's a form of control, right? And he wrote a book out net, and it's called Libido Dominandi, Sexual Liberation and Political Control, right? And I did a book review on it, so definitely check that out. Um, so, you know, at this point, he, he under, understandably loses his, a little bit of his patience, right? This is, a, this, is a, this, is a, this is starting to become an aggressive crowd, basically from these women, right? These woke women. Um tossing out expletives and you know he decides to fight back and this is this is this is where it's it's so tough probably to 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 retain your composure when you're constantly getting bullied and bickered and getting cursed at right um so i don't blame him that's that's got to be so tough to have hold out as held out as for as long as he did but this is this is what it comes down to this sort of this sort of rage at the truth, right? And so because they hate the truth, right? This the, this is what they're talking about when they mean a platform of hate, as in don't speak the truth, right? Because to them the truth is hate. But unfortunately, 
what's terribly ironic for these people is it's actually the truth will set you free. Right? The truth will set you free. But, I, but we're surrounded by this propaganda of pride and being your own God and this culture of narcissism that you, you think you can, you can somehow put your will over nature and reality and it, it just doesn't work. And you can try to make it work. Right? You can try living a lie, but that, that gets exhausting for, for a lot of people, I think. And so I think some I think, yeah, I think for so many of them, pride is what keeps them going because they would rather be so prideful than to humble themselves at the truth. And also on that note is you also don't hear about people who were trans and then they come back to their senses and go back to their original sex, which is of course male or female. And you don't hear about that. That sort of thing is also suppressed because, you know, it takes away money from the from the big, from big pharma. It takes away money from these machines. That that are in this industry, this demonic industry, filled with lies, all kinds of lies. Um. So there you go. We'll jump back in. So point is. I'm trying to have a reasonable conversation. So again, this is what the moderns want. This is where they're comfortable with. As soon as he says, tells, tells them to shut the fuck up, they roar back, you shut the fuck up, right? This childish game, like, you're bad. No, you're bad, right? So, and this is, this is where they, this is where they, you start rolling in the, in the mud with the, with the pigs, right? This is where their, their, this is where their home court is, right? The, the court of insults and uh, derogatory things, um, because this is what they, this is what they excelled at. And so, um, you know, he, he tries to pick it back up again, but this is, they, they salivated at that chance. It's like, oh, now you're speaking our language. We can do this all day. We can curse and insult you all day because that's what we're good at. Station with a reasonable person. The point is, the point is, the point is that, even even within a an oppressive even within a horribly oppressive structure there are still norms that are worth keeping and so my problem with queer theory is that it so again the modern woke woman says not wanted here again what, what are we talking about the truth and she says the truth is not wanted here here right it's garlic to a vampire they it just repels them and so they say it's the truth is not wanted here right because they, they need to keep themselves in a bubble of delusion we'll keep going one of the problems of queer theory is it runs it it is too broad of a it doesn't have the capacity in its formation from the beginning, it is based on transgressing norms. That's what it's based on. But again, some norms should be transgressed, and some norms should not be transgressed. That's it. So there you go. Do you agree with that? So what are we talking about here? Transgression. What? What, what is being transgressed? morality the moral law that's higher than any man-made law right and now we, we we can't talk about that but we're going to talk about it and the for, we we want to get a we want to we want to get away from ethics but it's not going anywhere morality is here to stay because it's deeply it's a it's a deep part of us it's a part of our human history and the more the modern willfully ignores the, the how ubiquitous morality is, the more they can't escape it. To this next part where this 
trans individual, he describes himself as that way, he starts speaking to him and let's just see how it goes. And I don't agree with that. I believe that trans women are women and whether or not, uh, I, I don't even know if you proclaim to that ideology because you don't talk about it. You, you avoid it in some manner of speaking so that you don't show what you're saying in that regard. From what I've seen. Right, which is why this whole thing is, is I, I was here to talk about the murder of the planet. He all made it this way. He's, he's, he's speaking his case, and he's, done, he's doing it with civility. Because the, the point previous to this is that this is okay to do with, right? As adults, we're not always going to see eye to eye on everything. And we're going to disagree. We should all know this. But there's so many people out there that if you disagree with them, it's like a mortal sin to them. Especially on some things. I remember back in the day losing friends over the whole Trump election. Um, and it was ridiculous. I mean, I, I used to know people that spent all this time hanging out and, and whatever. But at the end of the day, these, these were a bunch of fake friends that was a part of a party culture. So good riddance, right? They weren't really my friends. Friends because we drank together? That's it? And these, those are the same kind of people that, who were so self-righteous and were so prideful to say, oh, you don't, you're voting for him? Oh, you're not my friend anymore. Boom. Uh, no longer friends on Facebook. No more text messages. And it was appalling. It was ridiculous. But I don't need that kind of person in my life. Go off with your degeneracy and go off embracing modernity. See how that works out for you. And it, yeah, that was my point is to talk about the murder of the planet. And so I'm gonna, it's, it's time to go. Got a few more minutes. Okay, so, so, um, so your, your, okay, and I can, again, I have profound respect for your maturity and capacity. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I, I mentioned Eve Ensler a couple times. Answer the question. I, was, I mentioned Eve Ensler a couple times, and part of the reason I did, I was hoping that somebody was going to say, you know, Eve Ensler disagrees with you on some issues. And she does. And that's great, because we're both adults. And that's what you do. So, 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 so I, I mean, you have presented yourself respectfully, and, and that's great, and we disagree, wonderful. And now having, we have a couple minutes, so, 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 if people are going to complain here that I don't say the mantra of trans women are women, can you please define the word woman and define the word trans woman. And before you go, I'm going to say that A, definitions cannot be tautological. Like a square, you can't say a square is a thing that's a square. We know that. And also, it has to be verifiable slash falsifiable. Such that if I say um, I'm a vegetarian, and then you say, what did you have for dinner last night? And I say, how about that? So this professor, Derek Jensen, was asking the question, what is a woman, back in 2018, way before Matt Walsh was. But, I mean, I'm sure people have thought about that, but for the longest time, this is a question that did not have to be asked, right? You go back to the 90s, when I grew up in the 90s, what is a woman? I mean, they would look at you like you're crazy, right? It's like, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you going to ask me, what, what, what's the sun? Are you going to ask me, what is water? Right? So, but here we are, right? Um, and I'd love to bring this up. So let's, let's see what he, how he goes on. But A, definitions cannot be tautological. Also, um, shameless self-promotion. I did a video re reaction of uh, Matt Walsh's What is a Woman? So um, I strongly recommend you check that out, listen to the whole thing, and let me know what you think. Bacon, he's like, 
that's falsifiable. And this is true. I'm not picking on you. This is generically true for definitions. So, so if I were going to go to uh, do a protest of Donald Trump and I were going to say, remove all dams, and he looked at me and he said, okay, great, define remove and define dams, I hope I could do it. So, so <laughs> people here are really mad because I don't say trans women are women. So define woman and define trans woman. I think you're a lovely woman. So once again, the, the woke woman, this, um, all right, so she, she attempts to insult his masculinity by, by saying that, that she thinks that he's a good, a good woman. And it's, it's so weak and contrived that it's, it's, a, it's entirely laughable, right? Um, once again, they, they, there is no defense, so they, they have to assault the person, right? And so they start trying to assault it. What's the next how do you try they try to they try to hurt him by trying to get to his masculine and side and saying, Well I think you're actually, you know, you make you're a you're a woman or whatever. Um, which of course it doesn't work. Um, but it comes from spite, right? It comes from it, that that's what that's what's that's what that's what's driving it is hate, right? Well that, that's actually not a definition of woman. Can anybody do it? Did you hear that? Can anybody do it? This is the world we're living in. I mean, this somebody in the crowd said, can anybody define what a woman is? I mean, what are we talking about here? They're acting as if like this is a challenge to do a, a solve the Rubik's Cube puzzle in, within five seconds or one second. This is like... They're, they're making it seem like it's this supreme metaphysical question like why are we here or um, is space real right this whole thing it's like they they, they she asked it as if like it's it's this deeply mysterious question that's plagued humanity since day one can anybody define what a woman is anybody you can't look it up yeah, yeah, I do look I it up. So oh, sorry, go ahead, please. Forgive me, I'm conflicted in that I would say that a woman is just an identity that is prescribed based on our preconceived notions of society, like of our notion of gender. Gender, gender itself is just something that we created arbitrarily, um, and then trans woman is just another further abstraction from that. In that, for some reason, we prescribe that sex is related to gender originally, and we have become. Either you could say more progressive or more conservative in that idea on what political ideology prescribed to, but mostly you can say that being a woman is just the notion that we, we, we have these specific adjectives or these specific concepts um, ascribed to one notion in the same way that being transgender is for some reason my sex doesn't match my gender. Um, and because of that, um, for whatever reason, we have to have this notion that there is something that is transgender, or that is, you know, beyond gender, I guess, or whatever. Um, and that, to me, you know, what is, what is even just gender and being transgender than yourself? I, I'm, I'm sorry, what? I, could you, I, I don't understand your definition of woman. Can you, can you? Woman is just, it's, it's something that's, it's an amalgamation of things that we decided was a woman. It's just, it's, no, that, at the heart and at the core of, of a big issue here for, for, for a lot of moderns that struggle with this. You ask a modern what is a woman and they give you some indoctrinated, regurgitated vomit that they learned from some woke professor at some uh, indoctrinated school um, or what they saw trending on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, right? A bunch of propaganda that's to say, oh, here, here, here's the canned response to that, when really it's what is a woman, an adult human female, right? Someone who is, can, can bear children, naturally. Someone that can be a mother, right? Um, but for so many moderns, they, they just struggle with that, and so they have to use these, these sort of spells that are casted on them that are deeply incoherent and instead and when it's when the light of truth 
shines on that light, it melts away. So the end result is, once again, rage. Rage because they hate the truth. Wait, wait, no, 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 hold on, hold on. But, be, but if, if, if woman is an amalgamation of things we decided are woman, that's tautological. Again, remember, we, you can't, that's like saying a square is the thing that we decided is a square. That is the best way that I, and myself, and someone who's young and maybe isn't great at being able to say I Okay, so can I, can I, if, if I may, if I may, if I may say, if I may, if I may say something as somebody who is older and is being respectful with you. Oh my God, these people. But nobody's still defined. Nobody's still defined.